with the Jaguar XK It seems like just a few years ago that we were excited about the launch of Jaguar's new coupe, with its aluminum bodywork and mesmerizing lines. As a replacement for the aging XK8, it hit the spot perfectly, crisping up the older model's more rounded edges and replacing its old-world interior with something rather more modern. Racy is available if you want. Alex Dosen but in 2014, production came to an end, just as the F-Type coupe came into being. Don't read too much into that, though. The F-Type was never meant to kill the XK, said Ian Callum in a recent interview with Autocar, adding that having both an F-Type and an XK in the range was always the plan. A replacement, then, is on the cards albeit a little way off, meaning lovers of grand tours like me will have to wait longer. How tedious. If you're impatient, like me, you might be tempted to take the plunge on a late example of the last generation model. Oh, sure, these feel a little dated now, but they're still just as comfortable and satisfying to drive as they were when they were released. Indeed, there are few grand tours that combine such elegant looks with such comfort not to mention, such accessible prices. Okay, so if you want something newish, yeah I'll still need to stump up quite a bit of cash. £37,000, for example, gets you into this admittedly very tasteful 2013 portfolio, with just 16,000 miles and a full history. But that feels a bit steep when an XKR with barely any more miles can be had for similar money assuming you're willing to settle for something a couple of years older. But this, this is much more like it but it's further down the age and price range that the XK starts to make more sense. Early 4.2-liter examples can now be had for well shy of £15,000, which seems to me like a lot of car for the cash. However, I'd stretch myself a little more to get hold of one of the first 5.0-liter cars this one, with reasonable miles and a promising sounding history, is nibbling its way south of £20,000. The advantage of going for one of these XKs is that you get the significantly improved AJ133 engine that later formed the basis of the cracklingly angry lump sitting in the nose of the FTYP ESVR. Of course, here it's rather tamer nevertheless, 385 horsepower is not to be sniffed at, and while the XK is still a bit of a slusher, that 62 miles per hour comes up in just 5.2 seconds suggests it's still quick enough to provide plenty of entertainment. It sounds better than the older 4.2, too. Still too rich for your blood how about an earlier XK8? Then I'm a bit biased here, as an XK8 was the first half descent car my old man bought, but I think they're pretty cars despite that slightly lumpy back end. And while, of course an 8 is not as quick or as good to drive as the later cars, it's still a lovely old tourer, with that Spitfire wing slab of wood giving the interior the impression of an old country pub. Or for just £5,000, £5,000 gets you a decent-looking example in my book, that's a bit of a bargain right now, as it can't be too long before the numbers thin to such an extent that the values start to climb again. The Jaguar XK, then, is alive and well in the classifieds. And while none of these iterations will give you the last word. In handling dynamics, all of them have an appeal that only a big Jag can offer. Fingers crossed the same can be said of the new one and, ahem, that it depreciates quickly enough that we can all afford one soon. Alex